So what's up everybody? Welcome to yet another video. This is not so burned in here coming to you again. Well, it's been like what, 14, 15 days. It's been a really long time since I last posted a video. This is day number 16. And by the time I post this video, it's probably most likely going to be day 17, which will be the, uh, the 10th tomorrow, Tuesday. But anyway, you see the title and this is something that I never really, I didn't really think about this when I, when I first got the bike, when the bike was uh, still kind of new. It still is kind of new, but you know, it's beginning to show a little small signs of wear. The chain is replacing blah, 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 and all that. And so I started thinking. I did more than thinking, actually. I combed through the city looking for parts and just, you know, basic essentials that I need for the bike to work on it, to replace a few things and... There are some things that I couldn't find and it is posing, it's becoming a problem. So here are 10 bike essentials that you cannot find in Burundi currently. I mean, let me not even waste more time. Let's just jump straight into the video. Mm. So I've had this bike for about like uh, almost a year now, uh, only seven months in Burundi. I pre-owned it back in India for about like four months, I think, four or five months. And it is currently okay. There's nothing wrong with it at, uh, at the moment. It is still operational. The wheels are still kind of new. The thread is still on there still fresh but a few things on this bike you cannot find in burundi and a few bits that are missing here you still cannot find too so number one on the list i wrote the stuff down so i'm gonna have to check them out every now and then yeah okay so disc brakes this part here this whole assembly from the disc brake the disc brake assembly, the uh, the disc uh, the disc brake pads, and the disc itself is something that you cannot come across anywhere in this country. Believe me, you, I have combed throughout the city, and these you cannot find. And my front disc brakes are beginning to wear out. Although I suspect uh, the actual brake pads are fine, they're okay. It's just the um, I just need to pull the cable. I think the the the, the cable pull is a, is a is a little loose, but the brake pads themselves are. Still Still, there's still a good amount of uh, bite left to them. Almost brand new. So that's number one of the things that you cannot find in Burundi. Second thing that you cannot find is um, these wheels. These are your regular 700 by 38 C, 38 millimeter wide. These wheels are unavailable in Burundi. The only way you could find them is if you go to a bike shop that sells a similar bike and try to take a wheel from an already existing bike, which nobody will let you do. The other thing that you cannot find at the moment is uh, one of these guys. It's a handlebar bag. These guys come, they, 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 they come in really handy. You can store a bunch of things in here. You guys have seen me riding with, uh, with one of these. Uh, your phone goes here at the top. You can click on, on the screen of your phone. The touch sensitivity is not affected at all. But then again, that depends on the kind of phone that you have. And then if you open up the compartment and look inside, you can see that you can store quite a few, few items in here. You can have your uh, ID card in here. You can put your, you can have your money in here. You can have a, a few chocolate bars or whatever. I don't know, anything that you find of, uh, that you might need to bring with you on a ride, you can put in there. And then these come in two types. You get one that you place here on the stem and handlebar. And then the other one you place right here on the top tube of a bike it's about this size which uh, these uh, the ones that you the ones that you place on the top tube tend to be somewhat bigger than the ones you place on a handlebar saddle bag is another type of bag uh, that goes right underneath the saddle for those of you that do not know what the saddle is a uh, saddle is this uh, this bike seat so the bag goes underneath here they come in many different shapes and sizes some of them are small others extend all the way out to here the fourth is a uh, tail tail and uh head tail and headlight so this bad boy here i found i came with from india i bought the uh, i bought this in india with 20 2022 20, hindsight i should have bought extras <laughs> with me and i should have brought different kinds because this one here doesn't have uh the brightness isn't really it's not really all that bright but then again it's not needed during the day it's only needed in uh in early mornings and late evenings you put them on and they light up 
but there are some that can be brighter than that. These are unavailable in Burundi. I looked everywhere. They are not. Like, I, 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 I wasted my time getting out there. And then you have uh, others that you can place right at the front, like right over here, for visibility. So the, they come in two types. Some are meant for you to be seen and others are meant for you to illuminate the road, you know, so you can see the road up ahead. Bottom bracket removal tools. So at some point, my bottom bracket was um, squeaking. I'm not sure if it was the bottom bracket or the um, pedal that wasn't uh, all the way fastened into the the, 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 the the bottom bracket that was squeaking. So I don't know. But anyway, I did look into the bottom bracket and my bottom bracket is a threaded one. It's a threaded bottom bracket. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the threads right there. So a bottom bracket removal tool is something that I couldn't find and I looked everywhere. I went to Adams, I went to all over. I couldn't find that. And then the next thing that you cannot find are pumps that come with pressure gauge. I do have a pump, a, <laughs> a pump that I bought, that I purchased in, uh, in Bienzi out in, uh, there's a place when you go down to Rivermera Market, but it's one of those uh, uh, Chinese cheap uh, pumps. It works. Uh, don't get me wrong it does work but uh, the one problem with that pump is there is back pressure that comes from the tire into the pump so you 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 got to keep pumping and then hold it down and then disconnect the, uh, the 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 hose from the tire because if you leave it there too long the pump comes up like the air pressure in the tire pushes the pump backwards so it doesn't have a restrictive um, what do you call those Ah, come on, you find them in blood vessels. The, 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 the ones that stop blood from back flowing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. I haven't been in engineering for too long. But anyway, so you cannot find any hand pumps. You can't even find flow pumps, let, uh, let alone electric pumps. Those are, they are not a thing. Number seven, I couldn't come across decent helmets here. This is one of the helmets that I came with from India. Uh, these come with uh, good foam padding. This is the good quality one. And you, as you can see, it's beginning to, to wear a little bit, like there's uh, bits of uh, broken pieces on the plastic here and there. And this is the helmet that I fit my camera onto. And I hate removing the, uh, the mount, the camera mount, every time I need to film something else that is not related to cycling. But it's beginning to wear out. Bits of the uh, cushioning are gone. Others are a little, you know, it's just beginning to wear out. And uh, the ones that I could find here are the foamy bit, the black foamy bit that's on this um, helmet. They have the white bit and uh, the white foamy bits that they have on their helmets tend to come from <laughs> This, mat this material, like I kid you not, the material that you find in boxes when you buy electronics, like TVs and stuff like that, that's, those are the ones that they use for the helmets here. I took one look at it and I'm like, nah, you gotta be kidding me. No way I was gonna get that. So I'm left with, to work with one helmet at the moment, which is, it's fine really, it's not a problem, but I'm gonna need a, uh, a replacement. I need at least two or three other helmets. You know, when I wash this one, I'd like to pop in another helmet and just go. Number eight on the list is gloves. Right, as you can see, if you've been following me on my channel and all my other videos, you haven't seen me wearing gloves at all. At all, actually. I don't think you've ever seen me with gloves. But, hold on. I got one of these from T2000. Was it T2000 or Homeworld? I don't remember. But these are uh, your generic, uh, the grip is non-existent, the fit is not good, and they only have like one particular size, just two sizes, and it works, but it's not really all that good. It's, you know, <sighs> yeah, cycling computers. Um, I don't have what, one right now that I could show you as an example, but cycling computers are just basically little uh, phone sized like uh, gadgets that you place right here on the uh, handlebar. It, it, uh, it usually extends out of the handlebar like this. So basically what a cycling computer does is that uh, some of them come with a navigation and others come with uh, with a speedometer and uh, a taco, a, ta a, taco a tachometer, sorry. So it shows you the speed that you're traveling at, it shows you the cadence and all of that. Cycling computers are a little expensive, I'm not gonna lie. That's probably the reason why nobody's willing to invest in that. So yeah, you can't find those when you come here. 
if all of these things are unavailable it just basically means that there are no dedicated bike shops in burundi i've roamed i've combed through the entire city bujumbura i did find a few places out in ruvumera that was pre uh pre the ban before they banned everything and uh they did have a few things but the shops are not really dedicated to cycling as a um they are not dedicated bike shops they have a few things but not everything so if you were a tourist or anybody that comes to stay in burundi and you happen to be into cycling uh these are the things that i thought that you probably needed to know so if you were to bring your bike you might want to bring uh the parts that i mentioned the parts and accessories that i mentioned with you bring extra bring everything that you come with bring in two or threes if you can when it comes to the tubes bring plenty of those when it comes to the tires bring plenty tires can be replaced about you can replace tires in a year or two so bring two of those as a bonus though the one thing that uh, a lot of cyclists especially if you are a person that is into cycling for recreational purposes or you know for fun when you like to be adventurous when you like to stay uh, long hours on the saddle then you need to know that at the moment google maps does not support cycling in burundi that cycling bit is unavailable in burundi so you know like when you have when you open google maps like right below the uh the search boxes where you have to input the home location and uh the place that you need to go below that there's usually little icons that show a car a train a person walking and a person cycling in burundi that psych that that person that's cycling is not available which means you cannot identify bike routes on google maps and there aren't any really we don't have any dedicated bike spaces or bike routes on road we all just mingle together on the road cars bikes motorcycles all of us we all figure it out that's pretty much it that's all that i needed uh this is the video that i needed to make today about a few things that you cannot find in burundi if you are a cyclist i don't know if i missed anything yeah cycling gear you cannot find cycling gear is unavailable what you do find is second hand that's not a thing for everybody so cycling gear is not available too so i'm making this video right now to just basically say that uh, i don't know maybe this could be an opportunity for anybody that wants to get into the cycling business if at all you want to open a cycling store but at the same time i will tell you right now that in at the moment cycling is not really a thing in Burundi in the sense that not so many people do cycling here it's a really small market if you want to get into it the market is not that big and so basically you would need about six months to a year of sensitizing people to get into cycling you know trying to make it look cool but at the moment it's not really a thing so it could be a business opportunity if you're willing to not risk it but if you're willing to uh, wait a long time to see the returns so I don't know Take the video how you want to, but uh, that's the video that I wanted to make today. Other than that, this is not so burned in here. I'm out.